The topic this afternoon is the origin story of life here on Earth and understanding, perhaps uncovering, the mechanism that drives the very first proteins to emerge. Now, we understand that all life here on Earth relies on translation, which utilizes tRNA to link an amino acid and bring it to its respective amino acid to be linked together via peptide bond and thus form the functional unit of the cell, a protein. And we know proteins drive all of the cellular processes, and we are all made of cells, so thus we are driven by proteins. So researchers have been trying to understand and uncover how the very first protein or peptide could have been created or formed had there been no other proteins available, such as enzymes, to drive that process. And the answer some researchers have landed on and published results suggesting that that answer is thioesters sulfur-like compounds that could be the reaction material needed to drive the formation of amino acyl RNA. And so that is the topic we are going to break down in some detail. Now, historically, researchers looked at amino acyl phosphates, they looked at carboxyanhydrides, and found that these are too unstable, particularly in water, which we think early earth was primarily made of and so they cannot react with the vicinal diols uh, the vicinal diol of RNA and thus polymerization or hydrolysis will take place before any ability for an RNA to link to an amino acid could be established and if that's the case you won't be able to get amino acids together to be linked via a peptide bond so the paper suggests that thioesters, which possibly predate Luca, it's the last universal common answer, ancestor, came together with water at neutral pH and a cofactor, that is pentathene, and a coen- coenzyme N, all come together and allow for amino acid plus RNA to form an amino acyl RNA. So all of those constituents and environmental conditions in the laboratory result in amino acyl RNA without any enzymes present, which is the most important part of this whole uh, process. And so there is a two-step mechanism involved here to eventually reach the peptide. So first, you need to link the amino acid to the RNA so that amino acids can be brought together. That is step one. And that is what I have just described to you with all those, with the amino acyl thiols, the water, and the neutral pH. Once that complex is formed, amino acid attached to an RNA can reach other amino acids and specifically a thioacid at the same environmental conditions of water and a neutral pH result in peptide synthesis. This is when a peptide bond forms, and as you know, peptide bonds linking amino acids together form proteins. The functional unit of the cell drives all the cellular processes, and as you well know, all life on Earth is made of cells. So we rely entirely on proteins, and the researchers here have put forward a and demonstrated through empirical and experimental evidence a process and mechanism by which you can get proteins without enzymes, without other proteins already being present. And so this is a big breakthrough. If it can be validated by other labs and reproduced by other labs, which is necessary in science because you never know who's, who the researchers, if they made mistakes, if there were systemic errors, If there was issues, just laziness, incompetence, who knows? Uh, So you always want to be able to reproduce the results of one paper and one study by a different lab. And then we can say that this is a great breakthrough. Now, the paper says nothing about the formation of ribosomes, which we know are at the center of translation in current life forms, in modern day life forms. And so it has no... 
uh, position there. But as we can see, this is a very interesting breakthrough and finding. And one other point I wanted to make, which is that the conditions with the thioesters in the environment of water and neutral pH and the cofactor actually suppresses peptide synthesis, which is important and crucial because that mechanism, if it was to override the amino acyl RNA, you would not be able to bring amino acids together to form the pet long peptide chains necessary to make proteins. So it suppresses protein synthesis, and a switch is occurs when thioesters become less present and thioacid becomes more present. Then, at the same environmental conditions, peptide synthesis is actually activated rather than suppressed. And so this is a wonderful finding. It makes logical sense. They have empirical data to back up this process. Great job by these researchers. I just hope we can see it reproduced. And with that, we'll end this video. Take care.